Hey guys, I'm Jacqueline. Hey Marcella. And we are here to break down and analyze um, WandaVision. Yes. You guys don't know, <laughs> we recently just binged it all. Um, and as like, if you guys don't know, we did study like English and college and stuff. So we are very into that analyzing and symbolisms and metaphors and stuff like that. So this was literally wonderful <laughs> to watch because as we're watching, like our minds were just going like crazy for all of like the little details and stuff that were happening in the show and oh yeah definitely I feel like if we wanted to we can sit here and write like an analysis paper just on like oh yeah there's so many different things we could we could write about there's like escapism there's the stages of grief there's a lot to go over with WandaVision oh my god there's even like from a filming standpoint like cinematography wise um the way the cameras focus the coloration like the different just- sitcoms and how it goes through and how it even pertains to that time period. Yeah. There's like just a lot. They portrayed, like how like sitcoms in that time period were portrayed and like all of that. Yeah. So we're going to go through all of it. And yeah, this video might be pretty long <laughs> because um, it's a lot that happened in this. And even in like the initial like first few episodes, even when like nothing was happening like things were still happening where it was weird and you were that's why I feel like this is the kind of show that you want to re-watch after you've seen it and like you like once you get to the end and you know like what's going on you're kind of like oh I need to go back now yeah I need Even to go going back, back is painful <laughs> because of the ending I know I just like recently like I, I was telling Marcella this basically like when we like love stuff, we have to like consume every single thing <laughs> about it. Like you kind of just like have to dive like fully in basically. And so I just recently rewatched um, like Infinity War and Age of Ultron and like watching. And when you go through and like you really see Wanda's journey, like as a character, it's just, it's so fascinating. And I think by the end of this, she's definitely like one of, She, one of, if not not the most powerful Avenger, for sure, is her. Um, Yeah, I just, I loved her so much. And I think she's such a great character. And I'm so pumped and ready to see her in Doctor Strange. Oh, yes, that's going to be amazing. So overall, I mean, this is, it was so unique. Like, the way that um, it goes through the stages of grief and all of that. It's, like, a very refreshing show. Like, there's nothing like this. Um, it starts off very happy, and obviously she's going through the sitcom. We were born in 93, but we were at that age where we were watching Nick at Night, and, like, through our parents and, like, our families, like, we would watch, like, like, I love the Brady Bunch, Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, I Love Lucy, like, all those really popular sitcoms, so it was really fun to watch like the first like the initial like few episodes as we're leading into today's world because it was cool because every episode was a different decade and Mm -hmm. that was really really cool so like we had some bewitched vibes some I love Lucy in the beginning and even like the theme songs like the first of all the soundtrack it Marvel soundtracks in general are just amazing but like I love the soundtrack so much in oh my god um, yeah the theme songs and how it went like with the time period and all of that yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, really that was cool. such an added element. That One show really, that I didn't watch, though, really um, like- the Dick Van Dyke show, which is, like, what she was modeling it at. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I didn't watch. What she watched when she was little. I've never seen that. Mm-hmm. So it didn't really remind me of that because I haven't, I haven't seen it. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that one either. I've seen, like, Mary Tyler Moore, but I yeah. the Dick Van Dyke one we have not seen. The first episode definitely reminded me of I Love Lucy. Yeah. Their banter and all of that. Yeah, and like him coming home from work, and it mm-hmm. was, it was very, it was very cool because at the same time you knew that something else was going on. So as soon as you're watching like the first episode, you're like, oh, this is kind of cute. Like this is kind of fun. Totally different when you go back and rewatch, having known everything. Like even like the first oh, yeah, episode rewatch, I was so emotional. Even in the first episode when they're having dinner, 
you yeah. know that something's going on because they kind of like like you have the boss and the wife asking them questions like oh when did you move here how long have you like been here and yeah. she's kind of like uh and she has no memory of it because obviously this is all like a delusion and she's unaware that this is going on and like what what's really happening um mm-hmm. it's just like her imagination and like the world that she created yeah. but so even though we're watching it and it's funny and happy, like there's still those little moments where it's like something else is going on. Well, I thought it was kind of weird when um, the boss started choking and when he starts choking and like his wife is like laughing and it's just like, stop it, stop it. I know. Well, I because know. everything in like, at least in that time period, like everything was just funny. Like there wasn't any, yeah. like in, you didn't like go over like big issues in TV yet. That was like a taboo thing. So yeah. like, everything was literally just humor yeah. and like lightheartedness. And then obviously like when it goes like on the show, they start kind of doing like more like serious things. Like when she has the, this is like jumping ahead, but when she has like the conversation about death to her son, yes. that's kind of yeah. where like TV during that time period was more like real. Like, have like real life issues in them. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's like, what I like leaned more towards when watching sitcoms, like I lean more towards that full house, um, Brady Bunch, that feel. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think seeing the progression of it was just really cool. And like those like little tiny moments. And I thought it was really cool. If you watch, um, did you watch like that Marvel assembled? Uh, it was like behind the scenes and they filmed the first episode in front of a live studio audience. And mm-hmm. it's so cool because that's how TV was back that's then. That's how it was back then. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool how like they, like as a production, they were really like went all in and even like the crew was wearing outfits. Like I just thought it was so cool how they really immersed themselves in that time period to really bring it to life. And I think it really, really shows Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, but, like, the last scene in the first episode, like, having gone and, like, rewatched it, it's just, like, so sad because she, like, makes them, like, wedding rings and they're, like, so happy and they're, like, oh, we lived happily ever after. And it's, 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 it's so, so sad. sad. It really it's is. so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. Like, Literally, like, when you watch it, like, the first time, it's kind of, like, ignorance is bliss, because then when you know, it's just... Once you know how it's gonna end, it's bad. Yeah. The thing that I really liked was the Stark commercials. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And it kind of, like, once, like, I kind of went back a little, like, when I was watching, re-watching those parts, like, the commercials kind of go with, like, the time period and, like, what she's feeling at the time. Yeah. So, like, there's, um... I think there was a depression commercial in there, like towards the end, like later on, that kind of like um, makes more sense. Yeah, it was cool. The commercials were really cool, and it was funny because, like, as I was watching, um, whenever like a commercial would come up, it would like literally feel like you were watching a commercial. Yeah, at the time. <laughs> I feel like that was the point too. That was like to immerse like all of us, like the audience, into it and make us feel like. We're more right in, yeah like we're more involved in all of that um I think that's also why they did it like into a, a live studio audience or whatever because you're literally like in their home and like yeah. you, know, you feel it, it's like a different like experience I feel like yeah no definitely it it was very like even though it was very happy you know, when you know it's just it makes there's a very sad tone to it even though it's so happy Oh like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even when we, when we start getting her flashbacks, mm-hmm. like later on, yeah. like later on. But when we start getting her flashbacks, that's that's also really sad because you find out exactly why she picked like sitcoms and all of that. It was because that's what she used to watch. That was like her form of escape when she was little. So she's kind of like going back into that um, that comfort. Yeah, and I think that's forget. so. That's such a realistic theme. And I think I just loved the way it was done so much because it was so real. And oh, I yeah. think that's something that everybody does in their normal lives. I mean, like everybody, you escape into your happy place. But everything, books, TV, yeah. movies, everything is just, that's all escapism. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where I live like 99% of my life. (laughs) So like I was just able to feel like, I think we were able to just feel for Wanda so deeply because like you understand that. And, and I think even, I mean, again, this is jumping, but I think Monica even says like, I would have done the same thing. Like anybody with this ability, like would have done this, even though like she wasn't, And, like, the whole point is... That's why you can't get mad at her. Because it's, like, yes, what she's doing is wrong. But, like, if you put yourself in a position, like, if you could bring back one person, like, the person that you want to bring back the most into the world. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you? Like, I would do it. I would do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would absolutely pretend I'm living in the Brady Bunch. That sounds awesome. Exactly. (laughs) I think, um, again, like, when you look at um, sitcoms, like there's a very like sitcoms versus reality sitcoms are very happy they're very laugh out loud at like the silliest things like someone trips over something and it's like a big joke or you know like such little things and it would be like 20 minutes 30 minutes or whatever and even like probably 22 minutes or whatever and it just was a happy time like there was a little bit of an issue not that big of an issue but everything would get resolved in the spam of like 20 minutes 30 minutes exactly it wasn't like a deep issue that's gonna take like a long time to figure out or whatever it was like yeah. little like inconveniences that would make mm-hmm. that would fit into that funny plot line exactly because even mm-hmm. though it was a story happening it wasn't too deep and it was still comedic and whereas in reality we deal with something terrible that happens in your life it's like you lose someone you're gonna be going through that for the rest of your life probably that you're gonna always have that in the back of your head you know like life is not a sitcom even Mm. if you want it to be and I think that's um you know like you get past it and you move on and I think that's what they really really showed in this is that arc and that like evolution of like getting through something traumatic and getting through grief and getting well we we literally see her go through every single stage yeah get to that point where she can accept what happened um which is like the end of the the end of the show where she gets um where she accepts it we start to see that slowly i think in the beginning uh, is it the end of two or maybe the maybe in three where we start to see like the little things that are red Oh, that was in episode two, the helicopter. Yeah, Yeah, and that's kind of bringing her closer to the present. Because right now she's in the past and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, we kind of start to see that. I think it was, like, the helicopter that we saw. And then she ended up seeing, like, Vision's face, which was red. Yeah, and then she cut, like, the... um... Emma Caulfield, um, uh, from Anya from Buffy. She cut her, and I think it was blood. Yes, the blood was red, too. Yeah. Well, what's really interesting is, okay, now we're in episode two, but um, what's really interesting about all the coloration that we see are they're very red. Everything is red. That's the first color that we see. And if you know, like, symbolism, red is, like, Your vibrant. Your going to go on for 20 minutes about the color red. <laughs> no, but, like, red is anger. Red is anger. Red is blood, which is humanity red is all red is also love and it's all these different things and obviously it's vision's color kind of like he's like more like magenta I guess but it's still in that same family I guess it works but um yeah and I think seeing the helicopter that can also symbolize wanting to fly away into a different reality like a helicopter's fly it could also mean that and I think um the red also, the helicopter also foreshadows that she's going to have children. Like when we see the blood, that obviously is humanity seeping in, and obviously it symbolizes the danger of what Wanda's doing and how all of this is not okay and it's not as happy a fantasy as we think. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me of like, like it sounds like so weird, but like you know, um, if like a glass of wine, like like of a glass like drops to the floor like that's what it kind of reminded me of like when something falls and all of a sudden it's like this moment of like silence for a second because something just broke Mm -hmm. that's what it reminded me of is when she cut the glass when like the blood came out it was literally a moment of like oh my god 
something is going on here now. Like reality is coming in. Right. To the first episode, the first shot that you see, like one of the first shots, like in the very, like within like the first like 10 minutes of the show, they show a calendar. And on the calendar, there's the heart. Like the heart on the calendar, which is the heart you find out at the very end, which was the property that he bought for them. And like the note, like Mm -hmm. the heart was on the calendar. And that just made me like really sad. But it was like a tiny detail. I think it was was also on the calendar. um, There was like a picture of the little girl and it said something about like all, something about escaping into TV. Oh, the one is a call to escape into or something. So yeah. Yeah, like, I think all, of, like, these little hints as you go into it mm-hmm. were there. Like, all these, like, little, like, Easter eggs and stuff. And obviously, as the episodes go on, you get closer and closer. And I think the plot of the second one, the second episode was very strange. It was, like, the, ma- the magician episode, right? And it's all about, like, disappearing and... and illusions. Illusions, magic, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I thought that was a really interesting play on obviously like magic how Wanda is magic Mm -hmm. um so I thought that was pretty that was like a really like I that was a cool idea she made everybody else disappear too like all those other people in the town like yeah they had lives yeah exactly exactly like the illusion of disappearance like that's a big theme as well we we also see um we see that throughout like when it gets uh later on when I think a couple of them like came back in, yeah. into like that mindset mm-hmm. and they're like freaking out. Yeah. I think disappearance is also like you can you could do another paper on this. Oh my where god, you could I know. Disappearance versus appearance because at the end they come back and have to deal with the repercussions of disappearing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And obviously not only are these people physically disappearing from their real lives, but Wanda's disappearing mentally without even realizing it. So I think, um, yeah, I thought that was really cool the way that they kind of showed that in that and how like Vision was also like a huge part of it as like the lead of like being the one that has to be just like vanished because in a way he vanishes from reality. Right. But she's able to bring him back at the end. Like the magic element was really, really cool to see because you know that there's like a hidden double meaning to it. And it's not just what you're watching. Cause even when you're watching the first time, you're kind of like, like I was thinking as I'm watching the plot, I'm like, oh my God, all of this means something. (laughs) Oh, I know, right? (laughs) Like as you're watching that plot, you're like, okay, this magic plot, clearly she's doing something with this because it's Mm -hmm. not what it seems. Yeah, and then, oh my God, I thought it was so sad how um, at the very end, she says, like, is this really happening? And he's like, yeah, of course it's really happening or something like that. And it's just like, it's just like at that point, it's like, you know, it's not. And as you're watching, you're like, oh my God, this is not going to end good. Like there's something going on here when... And then that's when he, um, that's when we find out she's pregnant at the end of the episode. And that's when she's still in the denial stage yeah. when she's like, oh, is this really happening? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, cause the whole point was she didn't know she was doing this. Like she didn't understand that she was hurting so many people when she was doing this. And then once she realized it, that's when she stopped it as like a hero would. And well, we have that scene of um, Geraldine when she snaps out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah it's episode three now yeah yeah when she steps out of it and then because i think she was singing or something mm-hmm. she was singing right and then she snapped yeah. out of it and was kind of like she started talking of ultron and she was like she was freaking out yes. oh my god when they mentioned ultron i was like yeah <laughs> i was like oh my god <laughs> and that's kind of the transition for wanda uh to the next stage of grief which is anger because then after that it was like she was just snapping and she's yeah. angry. Like she I, didn't want to believe what she was doing. I really loved, I think it was episode three, I guess, was the, um, is that the Brady Bunch episode? Yeah, that's the one when she like gives birth. Yes, she gives birth in episode three. Yeah. Um, that's when we were in color now completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
which is obviously also the transition of the decade like into it and mm. I remember what's so funny is when you watch like the Brady Bunch there's like the logo that says now in color yeah <laughs> that's when like color tv was really mm-hmm. coming out and I think that's that. also the um that's the title of that episode is it really I now in color it, I think it's called now in color that episode oh, well there you go that's, <laughs> that's what the saying was I guess at the time was oh my god everything's in color now yeah um but I thought the Brady Bunch one was really cool. And as soon as, like, I saw, like, Vision with, like, the Kitty Carryall doll, I was like, oh, my God, it's Cindy's doll. <laughs> like, I love yeah. the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so, like, I was even like, oh, my God, the wall is, like, the Brady Bunch, like, set and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, one thing that was cool that I didn't know that they did was they kept the same set for all of it. Like, they just changed it to match the decade. To match the decade, yeah. Yeah, that was cool because it looked like different sets, like different houses or something, but it was all the same set. But mm-hmm. um yeah, I thought that episode was really cool. I liked all like the different like outfits and stuff like as you see and like the skirts kind of getting shorter. <laughs> yeah, right. Like all of like the little things and like her hair is getting her like, hair got longer. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> it was weird because like in this episode she's like getting like super pregnant like as time is going and then that's when you're just like what is going on and that's when I started thinking that she was like manipulating time to speed up or something I Mm -hmm. that's when I started thinking like something was going on with time was when she wonder if she was feeling like I wonder if the reason why she was like her pregnancy was going so fast is because she felt like she was running out of time and she was getting to that point where she had to like like, yeah. I don't know, maybe that was why it, it sped up. Probably. It probably was that. Right. Like, she felt like as time was coming to her, like, she was a clock, a ticking clock. Like, she didn't really have the nine months it would take to have a baby. Yeah, like, she was, yeah. she didn't have that time, so she needed to make the most of it and kind of, like, speed that along. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was funny how, like, at one point, she's, like, going to go into labor. Like, she's like, oh, my God, my water broke. I'm going to have the baby right now. And then she, like, sits and is, like, having, like, a casual conversation. And well, that I'm, whole scene like, was very funny, too. Like, we have everything going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, as when, like, that's happening, um, who's, I think she, she went as Geraldine on the show, and then you don't realize until the end that that was Monica, who, if you've seen Captain Marvel, that's the little girl in Captain Marvel, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was really interesting is she's, like, having this, like, conversation with Geraldine, and she's like, oh, like, let me show you, like, what the house looks like, or something like that, and then she goes and, like, sees the crib, and it, like, triggers, like, oh, yeah, I'm in labor. <laughs> she was trying to hide that that fact that she was pregnant, too, because... That would yeah. show that, like, that would reveal her powers, and she was still trying to hide her powers at that time. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was really cool about that is when you think of, I think you could think of like birth as like a symbol as well, because the whole show in general is about death, kind of like it's about mm-hmm. grieving and it's about death. And so I think instead of losing, she's like, I'm giving birth I'm giving life I'm bringing new life into my fake life (laughs) like I'm bringing life into this world and um yeah I just I don't know like when you think of it like that like that's kind of an interesting fact how they kind of did um birth versus death as well in the we also see this is later on but we also see death um later on when the doll gets out and then it ends up it's dead and I think it's so interesting when she has to explain to her kids that, um, like, her kids are trying to tell her to bring the dog back, for, like, use her powers. And she's explaining to them that no matter how sad you are, you can't bring somebody back. And she's kind of talking to herself in that way because that's when she's kind of getting closer and closer to that acceptance. But that's, like, later on. That's, like, the next stage. Well, so, I thought it was very – what's interesting about that conversation is I feel like it's very – reminiscent to what people have like in today's world like how many times is like when you when you're dealing with a friend who's who lost someone and you try to talk to them you try to like get through to them you try to like say like oh my god I'm so sorry for your loss like stuff like that and you try to talk them through it and I think it's so different to talk someone through it than to actually be the one going through it And I think that's what that kind of showed like because Wanda was saying to her kids like oh you know 
it's okay when somebody dies, like that kind of a thing. But internally, she's heartbroken and she's struggling to understand what she's saying to herself. Like, it's kind of like on autopilot. Like, when you say when you say to these things to people, like advice, and it's kind of like take your own advice kind of thing. Like Exactly. It's, it's like, it's so much easier to give advice than to actually take it. And mm-hmm. I think that kind of shows that contrast with that conversation. And I think that was the next episode. Yeah. I feel like from there too, that's when like things start getting more serious and we're not so much on that sitcom, like where it's like, oh, there's no big issues that we're talking about where it's like, that's more like things are out in the open. Like you're talking about hard conversations, like that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And as like, it's more reality, like seeping into Mm -hmm. her fake life. And there's at one point in, I think it might've been episode three or four, but there's one point when like the TV like glitches and then she like resets everything to start over again. Like, where she'd, like, stop, like, fast forward or something like that. And it literally, oh, like, yes. replays the conversation. When some, it was, like, she didn't like that, that what, what happened. And then she went back and rewind. Yeah. I thought my TV, I thought my laptop, like, glitched or something. I was, <laughs> like, I was, like, what just happened? Because it, like, replayed, like, the exact same conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that's when I was, like, okay, she's controlling time. And I you kind of understand, like, okay, she's controlling, like, this world. But I'm, like, right. thinking, like, okay, she's definitely, like, manipulating. Kind of. It's that's just, not, like, her own reality. That's what I was thinking. That was my theory, was that she was just um, controlling everything. Mm-hmm. When she, That's when she really faces Geraldine in that episode. And she, like, kicks her out of her reality. Because she's like, okay, you can't be here. You're catching on to what's going on here. So you are not allowed here anymore yeah and then then that's when you really see like okay this is a fake reality that we are in we're in a different world kind of like a different dimension it almost seemed like and Mm -hmm. she kicks out monica and monica's just like it's wanda it's wanda and yeah yeah Yeah. and And they're all at sword at sword and they're watching a popcorn that was it's funny because like that's the point of like tv yeah. And they're all getting pleasure from, like, Wanda's reality. It's just, yeah. like, funny. No, exactly. It's exactly. Like, ironic in that way. And what's funny is, like, they were trying to figure out what was going on as we as an audience are trying to figure out what is going yeah. on. Too. We're all just confused as to how the Avengers have a sitcom. I think we're, like, <laughs> Darcy say something like that. She's like, hey, the Avengers are on a sitcom. <laughs> Um, I really liked her too. I she's in the Thor movies, so I was it was cool that they brought her around for this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really liked her. And um, yeah, that's what she says. She says that to Geraldine, who's Monica. She says, "You're a stranger. You're an outsider." And then mm-hmm. she like kicks her out of there, which was really really cool. 